Today I want to go over with you the outer body block, Montong Bacat Maki. And if you want to know a little bit more about these actual blocks, I'll put some links below in the description. To start with, the first thing we need to understand is what part of uh, the actual block do we block with. And the part that we block with on the arm is this is an outer block that we're going to be doing. And what, the way we're going to block it is where the wrist is, we're going to be going two inches down. It's this section here that we're actually blocking with. So when we're blocking, we're coming out and we're blocking with that side, the outside of the arm, two inches down from the actual wrist. So that's where we block from, whether it's on the right hand side or the left hand side. Now, we know what we're going to block with, but um, what are we actually trying to block? Well, we're blocking something which is midsection. So something is coming towards us, their opponent is coming towards us, and they're coming towards us in the midsection from the belt up to the actual top of the chest here. This is the area that we're actually blocking. So we're coming and blocking this side here. And we're blocking whatever it is, we're blocking it, deflecting it, making it go out of the way, but it's midsection. So, what also we need to understand is some other um, fundamentals with the actual block itself. We now know that we're actually blocking with the part of the um, arm. We know that it's a midsection, but what we also need to understand at this point is some other basics of the actual technique itself. And one of them is that when we're actually doing the block itself, it doesn't matter whether it's in the front stance or a walking stance, uh, a couple of points to remember is that the wrist, the top of where my knuckles are, are shoulder height and are parallel with my actual shoulder. They don't come too close, they don't come past. They're actually parallel with my shoulder and it's shoulder height. The opposite hand is back on the hip, facing upwards. And when you're going to be doing the actual move itself, it's done in one continuous movement, like so. It's not start, stop, start, stop. It's just one continuous movement to make the actual uh, block happen. And the other thing to remember is, especially with this block, is that where we start the block, we start the block at the shoulder height and it comes through continuously at that same height. It doesn't start down here and then come up and it doesn't start high up and then come down. It starts on the shoulder height and it just comes through and across. So they're the things we need to bear in mind when we're actually doing this actual block itself. Now, what we now need to do, we now need to go and actually understand the mechanics of how we learn the actual block. So let's do that. First thing we need to do, we need to get into the ready stance, Chumbi Sogi. And from here, we make an X in front of ourselves. What we want to do is have the hand in front, which is a reaction hand, that is going to be palm facing away from ourselves. And the hand that we're going to be blocking with the palm is facing towards us. And then we close our hands to make the fist. From here, what I want to do to start with is I'm gonna take the um, left hand and what we're just trying to do is get an idea of the mechanics of the actual move itself. And all I'm gonna do is pull down with my left hand and twist out with my right hand. And then we put them back again. Pull down with my left, twist out with my right. Now making sure when you're twisting out with the right one, that it's shoulder height, and we don't go past the shoulder, we keep it parallel to the actual shoulder itself, and it's just slightly bent. Now, nowadays, um, the actual technique whereby the elbow is slightly higher, in the past, when I was taught many, many years ago, the, short, the elbow was actually bent more than what it is nowadays, and the reason for that is because then, if it's bent, this area is also protected. If it's too high, this area is open up and you can get hit. If you drop it down a little bit more, then it's protected, so it's more difficult to actually hit. So just bear that in mind. So, from here, palms crossed, 
twist down, twist out, and back. And you want to keep doing this until you then become comfortable with the actual motion and the movement of the actual hands themselves. Because all you're trying to do is get comfortable with the twisting of the hands and positioning of the final position of the actual block itself. The next part then is what we want to do is now we've got used to the twisting of it, we want to actually do the correct block itself, where it comes from. So from here, all we're doing the same again, I'm putting my left hand in the front, but this time my right hand, okay, is coming back parallel to my shoulder, okay? It's not above it, it's not below it, it's just parallel to my shoulder, sorry, the shoulder height is just level with my shoulder height. And all I'm going to be doing is literally pulling down, twisting out, and back again. Down, out. And same again, you want to get it so the point where you're literally doing a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, and a little bit quicker, so that you get to the point whereby you actually are finishing the pulling down and the block at the same time. Like so. And you remember when you're doing this, you're doing it on the left side and the right side. And once you're comfortable with that, then the next part is then is where we then add in the actual stance itself. Because the stance also helps us to help generate that power, because when we're coming into the actual block itself and the stance, we're also at the same time twisting the hips as well at the same time. So how do we do that? So as before, we get into the parallel stance, chumbi sogi, and from here, all I want to do is I'm going to step out with my right foot, I'm going to step with my right foot and block with my right hand. So I'm stepping out with my right foot into the forward stance at kubi. At the same time I'm going to do that, as I'm stepping, my hands go into the position where they're meant to be. Okay, so my front hand comes up, to the reaction part, it also is protecting here. My right hand comes up to the shoulder. Now, at the same time, when we're stepping, as you see, I'm going to twist as well at the same time. So from here, I'm slightly pointing in. My body is angled like so at this angle. And from here, as I step down and out, I twist out at the same time, and I twist the slight twist of the hip as well to finish. So from here, and back, and step, and back. So as you see, I'm coming up, and I'm stepping out, I just slightly twist, so I'm just slightly twisting to finish. And once you've done it on one side, then remember to always go and do it on the other side as well. And you want to do that until you're comfortable with the actual technique itself. Now, the other final part is where we add in the kiap. And it's a kiap which gives us that chi, which comes from the abdomen here, it comes out. And it's that final kiap which helps with that strength and the power to create that destructive block that we're trying to do. So we need to add that, so we'll add that in now. So there we are, we've now added in the Kia. Now, what we now need to do, we now need to then add it to then start walking up and down the actual room. So we're walking up and down and you keep doing that until you are totally comfortable with the actual block itself. So from here. And you just keep going up the room and then turn and come back down again until you then become really comfortable with the actual movements. So there you are. That is the outer body block, which I hope will help you when you're trying to learn and practice it. And if you want to know a little bit more about these actual blocks, I'll put some links below in the description. And as always, until the next time, Yamsa Heinida. <laughs>